iron corrodes, iron nails corrode. So how did a horde of Roman nails remain rust-free for nearly 2,000 years? And why did they start rusting so soon after their discovery? It is commonly believed that the Roman invasion of Britain stopped at Hadrian's Wall, near the modern border between England and Scotland. In fact, the Romans invaded Scotland on a number of occasions. In about 84 AD, they set up a fortress on the north bank of the Tay River at a site known as Ijtothal. The fortress housed over 5,000 legionnaires with a hospital, workshops, including a blacksmith's shop. In 88 AD, the legion was ordered back to the European mainland. They dismantled or burnt the buildings, smashed the pottery and filled the drains and sewers to prevent them getting into the hands of the local Caledonian tribes. Unable or unwilling to transport nearly a million iron nails south with them, they dug a pit and buried them. Iron could be used for weapons, agriculture and buildings in those days, so it was highly prized by the enemies of the Roman legions. The Romans did a good job of hiding them because it was nearly 1900 years before they were found. In 1961, an archaeologist, Professor Sir Ian Richmond, noticed a region of different coloured earth at the Ijtothal site and, after digging down some metres, came across a large corroded mass of iron consisting of nearly 10 tonnes of nails and other small iron implements. Further investigations found that while the outer items had badly corroded and formed a solid crust of iron oxide, those on the inside had only a minimal amount of rust on the surface. Many of the nails were sent to museums, galleries, corrosion associations and other interested persons around the world as gifts. They were mounted in a wooden box with a clear plastic lid, along with a white plastic label reading Iron nails from the Roman legionary fortress at Inchtothill, Perthshire, Scotland, AD 83-87. A box was sent to the Australasian Corrosion Association containing five nails of square shank section with flat circular heads of approximate lengths of 5 to 20 centimetres. So how did the nails remain free from corrosion for so long? The outer nails rusted so they were not inherently corrosion resistant. Most likely the formation of the outer crust of rust blocked access to oxygen so the common corrosion reactants were not present. It's not possible to know how little water oxygen the inner nails were exposed to over the centuries but clearly the amount was very small or the time it was exposed to these was very short. The investigation carried out at the site was archaeological, not a corrosion investigation, so no information on water or soil composition or other chemical factors was obtained. However, survival of iron on a river floodplain for nearly two millennia gives further evidence that protecting iron from water or oxygen exposure or both can prevent or at least minimise corrosion damage. However, the nails are now in a rather poor condition, showing dark, flaky rust, especially on the larger nails. Similar boxes appear occasionally on auction and other websites, and most of the nails on offer also appear to be similarly corroded. Photographs of nails in their original condition show far less corrosion. It would appear that the acetic acid fumes from the wooden box has been the main contributor to the additional corrosion. The large nail in the ACA collection shows heavy flaking at the tip and complete perforation under the aluminium mounting strap. The Roman nails show that it is possible to protect metal from corrosion for very long periods of time by minimising exposure to moisture and oxygen. However, the current condition shows the importance of care when handling and awareness of the less common corrosive environments such as wood acids. My name is Rob Francis and on behalf of the Australasian Corrosion Association, thank you for watching this short presentation.